So I don't know if you saw lately, but Apple has introduced like a new UI pattern, which is like this button that appears and disappears when you're scrolling through the page. And I got pretty obsessed with recreating this in Figma. And finally, I managed to do it. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you exactly how to recreate this animation and how you can transform it into a component so that you can reuse it in all of your other projects. So without wasting any more time, let's just jump over to Figma. So as you can see here, I just prepared like a symbol button and here I have the animation sequence which is basically some screen grabs of the animation from their website so nothing special and the reason why I created the button using auto layout is because I want this to be fully responsive so I can reuse it in my future projects if I undo this you'll see that the button has an outer layer which is the button then you have the button background which is obviously the buttons background and inside of it you have the text and this dot that has inside a simple icon that is is linked to my design system. So in terms of structure, it's pretty simple. Now, if you want to download the file and if you want to follow along, I left the link in the description below. So to replicate this animation, what we need to do first is to actually create these four states of our button. So we have the first one, which is the last state. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna try to replicate this one over here. Now what I'm gonna do is because this is created using auto layout, if I delete this text, this will automatically shrink. But what I need to do then is to go over here to my button background and make sure that the padding is equal on all sides. So I'm just gonna drop this to eight pixels as well. Perfect, now I have the second state. Then I'm gonna move over here, I'm gonna make a copy of this one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna switch these colors between each other. So I'm just gonna select the button background and I'm gonna change this to primary and then I'm gonna select the dot over here and I'm gonna change this to white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my icon over here inside the dot and I'm gonna drop the opacity to 0%. And I'm gonna go back to my dot layer and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna unlink it from my design system and I'm just gonna drop this to 50%. This way we kind of like replicate how this state looks in their animation. And lastly, the final one, I'm just gonna make a copy of this one. Basically what we need to do is to just make the button this appear so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the background the button background I'm just gonna remove all the padding because we don't need it and then because this is also created using auto layout what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my icon and I'm just gonna change this to one pixel okay perfect and then I'm gonna go to my dot and remove this padding as well now, as you can see, we have a small dot over here, but because we have this button outer layer, we have no problem like selecting or moving this around. So that's why I added that layer over there. But what I wanna do is to create the reverse one as well when the button disappears. So for that, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this over here. I'm gonna make a copy and I'm gonna drag it down. And then I'm gonna make another copy of this one. And I'm gonna have a state in between this and this one because what is going to happen is that we're gonna loop this into a perfect animation so I need to have a step in between this and this so now let's go over here let me just drop this icon again to one pixel let's just make it one pixel by one pixel kind of looks okay and then let me just remove a bit of the padding so this dot is a bit smaller so I can have this like two pixels let's say and then the padding between the dot and the icon, I will make this around two pixels as well. Now basically what we have is kind of like an in-between state between this one and this one. And that's pretty much everything that we need to design. The rest is just prototyping. So before linking everything together, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rename this to these layers to one, two, three, four, five, and six. Just so I can quickly identify the stages of the animation. And once I have that, I'm gonna click on this, I'm gonna go to prototype, and I'm gonna link my first frame to my second frame and here what I would like to do is I would like this to have it as mouse enter because I would like this animation to start when the mouse enters a certain area so I will select this to mouse enter I'll make sure that I have this on custom bezier make sure that you have this S curve created and lastly here where is the duration just set this to 600 milliseconds so that is the trigger of my animation now everything else between my second state and my fourth state we should add it as after delay because we don't want any interaction to trigger this we just want everything to roll out smoothly and to create that animation so I'm gonna select the second frame connect this to my third frame and here I'm gonna select this after delay I'm gonna put here one millisecond I'm gonna set this to 
let's say around 600 milliseconds as well. So let's see it like that. And then I'm gonna make sure that I have the S curve here as well. I'm gonna close it. And from this state to this state, because I have so many elements moving around, I would like this animation to be a bit faster. So it will look a bit smoother. So I'm just gonna connect these two, same thing after delay. But here where I have 600 milliseconds, I'm just gonna drop this to around 300. So now I have the final state of the button. Now, how do we make this disappear? Well, it's pretty much the exact opposite of mouse enter, is mouse leave. So if we select the fourth one, and if we connect it to the fifth one, you'll see that here you have this option called mouse leave. I'm just gonna click on mouse leave. And here, just because usually the animations when they disappear are a bit faster than when they appear, we can actually leave this at 300 milliseconds. So I'm just gonna put mouse leave, make sure you have the Bezier curve so that it's smooth, and then set this to 300, close it. Lastly, select the fifth one, connect it to the sixth one, same thing. You're gonna have after delay because we don't need any interaction. I'm gonna drop this to 200 milliseconds. And then lastly, I'm gonna connect the last one with the first one. And same thing, I'm gonna put it after delay. Make sure that, at, that after delay has only one millisecond. And here I'm just gonna drop this to 100 so it disappears faster. So now let me check if this after delay has one millisecond and it doesn't, so I'm just gonna add, hit one. So now it's one millisecond. But when you look at it, you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, Dennis, how I'm gonna use this in a project? It looks insane. And I have to give it to you, it does look insane. But here is how we're gonna fix this. So first, in order to kind of like create this into a component, what we need to do is to select every single frame and transform it into an individual component. So I'm going to hit my first frame, Command, Option, K on my keyboard to transform it into a component. And I'm going to do the exact same thing on all of my frames. So all of my frames now, I'm transforming them into a component. And after I do this, this is the secret. You just select all of them and you go here in your design panel and you combine them as variants. And once you combine them as variants, all of those links will sit inside. So if you go here to prototype, you'll see that all of those links of the prototype are inside of this component. And this is what will help us to reuse this animation over and over again in our projects. Now I'm just gonna rename this to button. I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna go here to design and make sure that the property is set to state just so I know that this is the state of the animation. And now I can basically copy any state or any variant of this component and reuse it in any of my projects. Now let me show you how we can use this into an actual project. Now let's say that we have this page over here and I would like to add this button around the middle of the page and just show the user when it's scrolling that he can read more or whatever message you want to show. So I'm just going to select here the fourth state, which is my actual button. I'm just going to zoom in and I'm just going to write explore more. Perfect. And now what I want to do is I want to trigger this when a user actually hovers over any of this area. So make sure when you copy this button that you drag it all the way across the page so that when the user, whenever process here with the cursor, it will be triggered. And that's pretty much it. Now that I have this, I can just switch it back to one where we have this small dot. Obviously, if, you, if you're if you bothered about this dot, you can also go inside here and just select all of your elements or the button background and just drop the opacity to zero and that will make everything transparent. So we can do that just so we cannot see anything. And now if we go ahead and if we go and play our prototype, you will see that if I hover over here, the animation will play and the button will appear. And if I leave this area, it will just disappear. And now as you can see, we have this issue that the button stays a bit too long on that state. And that's because I know exactly why this happens. It's because when I created this, one of the after delays, I did not set it to one millisecond. So one of these is set to the 800 millisecond, which is this one. So just make sure when you create these types of animation that the after delay is set to one. Okay, let's test it again and see if it works. And that's it. This is pretty much how you use this animation in your projects. And the best part of it is that once you have this, you can actually place it anywhere on your page. So for example, if I want to place this button also, let's say over here, 
I can just copy this, make it a bit smaller. So let me just go to design, make it a bit smaller, place it over here. This is a bit auto layout, so I need to figure out. Okay, perfect. And let's say that we want another button to appear here, but with a different text. So I'm just gonna set this to four, just so I can edit this. Then let's say that I want this one to have read more. Perfect, and let's say that I want this to be left aligned. Now I have this button here. Again, make sure that this is set to one, just so that it's transparent and nobody can see it. And now if you play the prototype again, you're gonna see that you have read more. So now you have read more here and here on top, view more details. I mean, come on, if this doesn't excite you, I don't know what will. It's like the fact that we can do this in Figma is absolutely amazing. Not to mention the fact that you can actually reuse the component. So mwah, it's just shift skis. I just love these types of things. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit that like button, smash that subscribe button if you haven't already, and I'm gonna see you pretty soon in the next video. Take care and see you later. Bye-bye. And we're done super fast. It took me quite a while to get this figured out, I'm not gonna lie. So I spent like a couple of hours just to try to figure out how to do it, but yeah, I mean, it looks nice. I love it, and I'm gonna definitely use this in my prototypes, but yeah.